Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining my YouTube channel. We're doing a series called Love Vision. Now, of course, you want to subscribe, hit the button there, because seriously, this is phenomenal content and really helps you grow in your walk with God. And plus, everybody needs a good laugh. <laughs> so at the end, we always have these amazing jokes, I say, with dripping sarcasm. But I want to continue our series on Love Vision. And I was thinking about this in relation to how we see things and what's on the inside. Because what's on the inside, I talked about it last week, what's on the inside shapes and, and can be the filter through how we perceive the world. So I think this whole inside content is very important and it's significant. And I was thinking about this in relation to something Jesus said in Matthew 23. In Matthew 23, He's addressing, uh, particularly from verses like 13 through almost the end of the chapter, he's addressing his audience. He's, the people he's talking to are religious leaders, Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, laws, lawyers, whatever. But he's talking to religious people. And I think sometimes I'm a follower of Jesus and I don't want to think of myself as religious. But I think sometimes if we're not careful, we can be religious in our thinking. You know, we have these filters of like, you know, right and wrong, immoral and moral. And I don't think those are all bad. I think we need and it's helpful and constructive to us. However, uh, it's interesting what Jesus did <clears throat> in Matthew 23, because he does like six or seven woe. Woe to you, religious leaders. Woe to you, religious people. And he starts to itemize what the problems are. And towards the end of these six, seven woes, don't do this stuff, be careful, he, he addresses and he says, he talks about two things that are inside and outside. And in verses 25 and 26, he's talking to the Pharisees, religious leaders, religious people, and he says to them, you clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but the inside is full of robbery and self-indulgence. And then he says in verses 27 and 28, woe to you guys again, because you're like whitewashed tombs, which the outside looks beautiful, but inside it's full of dead men's bones and uncleanness. And I, I want us to think about what's inside of us, because I think sometimes when we do the religious thing, we, we manage to what's on the outside. We want to look nice and, and pretty and suave and, you know, hair, makeup, you know. And I think those are all nice things. They're, I'm not cutting the legs out on those things. However, I think if we're, we're more concerned about our appearance and the external and saying the right things and being, you know, and appearing and doing the things, you know, external, if we don't take an inventory of what's inside, this is what Jesus is confronting these religious people with. It's what's inside of you. And when I think about my interior, I, and what happens in my thought life, the way I see people, the, or my perceptions, um, how I go around and, and see life around me, a lot of that comes from how I think on inside, interior, your, my, my thought life, my filters. And I think if you're like me, we have different experiences in our life that shape our filters, the internal thought life. And for some of us, you know, we want to appear righteous and above, beyond reproach. But we, sometimes we take that filter <clears throat> and we project that. And so when we see people that aren't living beyond reproach, we're like, oh, you know, we don't, we don't always look at them through the lens of love. We can be a little bit, we can be sometimes judgmental. Well, they're, they're less than. They don't measure up. They fall short. And I think we have to be careful because if we look through the lens of love, genuine love, then we grow in our love. We see people through love and not shortcomings. Sometimes we might look through the lens of rejection. You know, maybe we grew up and had people rejecting us. And we see, we always are prickly because we think some, we reject before they reject us. And if we don't look at what's inside of us, our interior filters and, and thought life, then I don't think we can clearly look through the lens of love. And this is very important for us because Jesus says, people know you follow me by your love for one another. And I believe this beyond the shadow of a doubt. God sees us 
through the lens of love. And God sees us as for who we really are. Not the shortfalls, the deficiencies, the inadequacies. God sees us by our divine design. He doesn't ignore that stuff. He doesn't. He acknowledges it. But he's like, I also, I love you and I know who you are and I know your design. I know your DNA. So let's agree with God, our Father, who knows us better than we know ourselves. And let's allow Holy Spirit to pour love into our souls, into our hearts, into our thoughts. Love that God loves us and that we see through the lens of love so that what's inside of us isn't, you know, bad stuff, you know, weakness and evil, self-indulgence and all kinds of distortion, uncleanness. Let's let Holy Spirit pour love into our souls to chase out the stuff that's not lovely. So thank you for watching. Of course, want to have some feedback, thumbs up, thumbs up, leave some comments. Obviously, you need to subscribe. Love, seriously, love. We're over a thousand subscriptions. Fantastic. And we keep growing. And of course, we need a joke here at the end because that's so much fun. Hey, what do you give a sick lemon? If you have a lemon that's sick, what do you give a sick lemon? Hmm. Lemon aid. I know. You're like, well, last week's was better. I know. But next week will be phenomenal. Thanks again for watching.